But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Malhoyt. I am the Director of Technical Content at Men and Mice. Um, I'll be taking you through this live demo today. Uh, please feel free. I think I've unmuted everyone, uh, maybe missed some of the latecomers, but feel free to use the Q&A panel or just verbally jump in and interrupt me at any time with any questions. Uh, very informal. I uh, just want to make sure you see what you, what you want to see. Um, so I'm not going to spend much time at all on slides, literally just have two more, uh, but I want to make sure that anyone who's not familiar with uh, Maestro or with Men and Mice gets a brief elevator pitch before we dive into the, the live demo itself. So as we all know, you know, multi-cloud, heterogeneous um, sites, multi-sites, um, it's all becoming very ubiquitous um, and it's really transforming the way that companies operate. You know, sustainable networking is becoming absolutely necessary. Sustainable networking through an overlay solution. Um, so, sorry, my slides just jumped back for some reason. Um, so Maestro really provides companies with a way to stop that rip and replace cycle that, um, you know, the, the, the constant churning of technical debt that we see so often that we're all so familiar with. Um, so instead of continuing that cycle of technical debt, Maestro makes it really easy to um, either migrate to a new solution. Um, so underlying services, whether that be cloud or on-premises, move to the best services for your environment, or we can also help prolong the life of your current services. Um, so we really do, you know, that's why we, we speak so highly of being a sustainable network management solution. I'm not going to read through all of this. Feel free to grab a, a screenshot if you want it. Um, but it does go through some of the, the highlights of Maestro, and we're happy to take you through it or send you some of this information as well. Just wanted to put, put it up there for you in case you wanted to grab a screenshot. Um, with that, I will try to remember to pop this Q&A information, the contact information up at the end. Um, feel free to reach out to me anytime if we don't get to your questions or if you think of some more. But Let's go ahead and get to the demo, which is what you're really all here for. Uh, let me just pop this up. Okay. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and make this full screen so it's a little more pleasant for you. Um, so I am going to be showing the uh, Maestro 10.2 web UI today. Um, for those of you who have worked with Men and Mice in the past, it's possible that you are more familiar with the thick client, with the management console. As of version 10.2, which just came out a few weeks ago, we are at over 95% feature parity with that thick client, with that management console. So I want to show you all the cool things that our developers, that our product people have been working on today. I am going to do kind of a brief overview of the entire solution as we go, but I'll point out and kind of focus on some of the new stuff that, uh, that came about with 10.2. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, let me enter my password here. So in the web UI, um, I'm going to start in the admin tab because I, I see so often that customers actually come to us looking for an IPAM solution. But what they really stay for is, you know, things like access control. Um, so let's go ahead and just start there. Um, with access control, Maestro is a pure role-based access control um, model. So in 10.1, we actually we could always do RBAC, but now we've created a, a pure RBAC solution so that it's simpler to manage, it's actually more secure, and so you don't have like 10,000 different permissions that you're trying to manage, um, which we all know can sometimes lead to things being less secure <laughs> than they were maybe to begin with. So now you can't assign permissions directly to users and groups. What you're gonna do is assign users and groups to, to roles, to permissions. And those users and groups can be created within Maestro or built based on what you already have um, in Active Directory or in your LDAP systems. So once you've got your users and groups created, we do have some built-in roles that come uh, out of the box with Maestro. You can see some of these built-in roles here. Um, and then you can create your own as well too. So we're very flexible. Um, you can create general roles, general meaning it's going to be a system-wide um, type of role, maybe all your DNS or all your DHCP or maybe your entire DDI environment, those permissions are going to apply system-wide. 
We also have specific roles. We can be much more granular if you want to uh, apply permissions to a specific DNS zone, for example, or IP range. So we can get pretty granular. Uh, and then you'll see these legacy types down here too. And that's actually for our customers that had prior versions who want to upgrade to 10.2. So obviously we didn't want to screw up their entire access management system. So now we've created these legacy roles and everyone has the same permissions that they had prior to 10.1, uh, sorry. Um, so, and, and honestly, I've talked to customer care about that and I've heard um, no issues with customers upgrading. So it's been really smooth. Everyone was really delighted with how that turned out back in 10.1 a few months ago. Moving on from access control, um, we do have the ability to manage SNMP profiles in the web UI now. Um, I'm not going to go through this because it was, again, just 10.1. So there is an on-demand webinar out there. Feel free to ask questions if you want me to go deeper into SNMP profiles. But I'm just going to point out that they were there. The same with licensing. Um, you know, you can manage your licenses in the web UI, which is, you know, great. Um, something new in 10.2 with the web UI, but not new to Maestro itself, is the ability to have uh, an HA setup or a high availability setup. So this references actually uh, Maestro Central or the brains of Maestro. Um, one thing to know is that Maestro, because it is an overlay software solution, it's even if it were to go down, it is not going to take down your DNS or your DHCP services. We're, we're an orchestrator. So if Maestro were to go down, that just means that um, the, the ability to modify things in DNS or DHCP or in your IP information um, wouldn't be available to you while Maestro is down, but everything will keep running as it is. And so with high availability now in the web UI, uh, it's just really simple to use. There is some configuration you have to do during setup on the servers, the central servers themselves. But once you have that configured, um, you can see I have two servers in the cluster now. One of them's offline. It is a lab environment, um, but uh, you'll forgive me for that hopefully, but it's really easy to add new servers. I can add a member. I can add comments if I want, um, you know, and, and Again, just as simple as that. I can do things like set active if I want to manually fail over to another central server. Um, the priority is such that if Maestro uh, Central 1 were to go down, then it would go to Central 2 uh, because that is the, the lowest number, the lowest priority, meaning it will it has the highest preference, basically. So that's high availability in a nutshell. Honestly, there's not much to show there because it is so simple to set up. Um, Address spaces are fantastic if you have any overlapping address spaces. Maybe you're a large enterprise or a managed service provider, um, managing a lot of customers would be used with overlapping addresses, multi-tenancy, that kind of thing set up. So we can certainly work with you uh, based on that. Custom properties. Um, custom properties, again, not new to Maestro, but new to the Maestro web UI in 10.2 with some, some added improvements. So I'm going to show you real quick what I mean by custom properties, and then we'll hop back and I'll show you, uh, we'll do a deeper dive into them. But custom properties are these, these column headers up here under the IPAM, under DNS. We do have the ability to create these, these column headers. And to give you a view of what they look like, uh, let's go to IPAM, we can show you some more. Um, this is what they look like in uh, in IPAM, in DNS. You can rearrange them, show what, you know, from left to right, what you want to concentrate on. You can tick or untick so, so that you can see or not see them. Um, but these are, are indexed, meaning they're searchable fields. So I can add all sorts of identi identity information in there, um, which can be really helpful, I'm sure, as you, uh, you know, start filtering, as you start parsing through things. Uh, it just makes it much easier to do things like automation and self-service and integrate processes um, into, you know, especially a self-service portal where people are going to be requesting maybe uh, VM onboarding and things like that. We can make it go much more quickly, make sure we get all the required records and uh, whatnot. So if I dive into how these custom properties are created, I can either click the plus sign um, or I can click add custom property. Um, I chose to go under IP ranges and let's say I'm maybe a managed service provider. So I want a customer name field. Um, I can pick from any of these types. This is gonna be a select list. 
I can choose whether I want this to be required. Again, going back to, you know, this is what I absolutely need. If you want to onboard this VM, I'm going to need all, all of this identification information from you. I can make it read only. Uh, let's go ahead and create a few companies. Um, we'll just go with three for now. Um, and then I can go ahead and select a default value. So you've seen this before, probably in a geography situation. If you live in a certain country, you might want to give that, that country pre precedence when a user goes to click on it. Okay, so cool. Now I've created another custom property. What we've also added is the ability to add a cascading list property. Now you could do this before in Maestro, but generally you had to go for uh, to customer support to get this in, uh, done for you. So now we've given you, of course, we'll still help you out. <laughs> customer support's happy to help you out, um, but but we're giving you the ability to do it yourself. Um, and it's actually very easy, maybe a little bit time consuming, but very easy. So let's just say I want to specify a business unit within a customer. So I had ABC and we'll give them BU1 and ABC, BU2, uh, Acme, BU1, Wayne Enterprises, BU1. Uh, I can again choose that default value if I save. Now I have that cascading list or nested list information. What's really cool is then you can go in and preview it. Clicking on that little eye icon, I can see now um, that I have my customer name property in there and it's selected ABC because that's my default. And now it just shows me that BU1 and that BU2 that were available for ABC. Lots of use cases there, obviously, um, you know, especially ge geography, any way you want to kind of narrow down um, the, the identity information for a particular object within your DDI environment. I can also rearrange things in here. So let's say if I want customer name to be up at the top, then I can go ahead and put it up top and click save. And now when I preview that again, of course, it's going to be up top here. So we've made it really easy to add your custom properties right there within the web UI. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for the, the admin configuration tab. Any questions on that? Let me go through and make sure I've unmuted folks as well. Okay, we'll keep going then. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time under server management. It's pretty self-explanatory and we can always give you a, a personalized demo if you're interested in hearing more. Um, we work with all kinds of DNS and DHCP services uh, on-premises, in the cloud, uh, all the usual suspects, um, really easy to add DNS servers, add DHCP servers. You can of course add men and mice, uh, maestro appliances as well. We do not require appliances in any way. We are a software solution, but we can absolutely um, give you VMs to use. And you know, if, if you're looking for maybe a small branch that needs its own DNS appliance or uh, you're, a, you're an SMB kind of company, you know, we can help you out there as well. Let's jump over to IPAM and we'll click on that left menu there. So under IPAM, we obviously work with IPv6 and IPv4. Um, on the left menu here, you'll see just different ways to filter out all of the data so that it's just much easy, much more easy to get to things. So here I can see all my networks. I can you know, give it a flat view. I can give it a nested view so that I can see things like site or boundaries, um, all sorts of ways to parse through the information. I do wanna point out this recently created, recently modified filter. Um, I just love those two things because it seems so simple, but if something's gone wrong in your network, if something's down, um, the likelihood is something just changed. <laughs> so if you go check out what's been recently created and what's been recently modified, that could possibly give you a really good uh, clue of what's been happening lately in your environment um, and, and let you know what's changed. So we do also offer this view history for pretty much every object within Maestro. Um, you know, I can see who changed it, when it was changed, the description of the change, and if they so choose to put in a comment there. Um, that's not a, a hugely interesting history, but you can imagine how helpful that would be in a troubleshooting situation. Let's go back to uh, 
Actually, let me show you, um, in 10.2, DHCP v6 um, is now possible for Microsoft DHCP. Um, you can see I have some DHCP uh, v6 scopes there. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Um, I can go ahead and create a new DHCP v6 scope. And let's just call it 2001D, what don't I have already, DD8. Uh, slash 64. Uh, I can fill out, you know, which server, give it a preference. Um, we'll click next. I can choose an AD site if I would like to, um, if it is part of, you know, an AD site, which it probably is if it's a, a Microsoft um, uh, scope, but I'm just going to click next for now. Um, if I were to click next here, you can see all of the, the fields that are required. Again, going back to properties. Um, test scope, and I'm just going to quickly fill this out for efficiency. Click next, and then I can check whether I want to open that scope after I'm done. Click save. Oh, well, test is not a legal value, but instead of going through all of that again, um, I will show you now how we can do uh, things like manage DHCP exclusions to create a split scope. First, we're gonna go to the manage scope options. Um, you can see here that I already have two servers in the mix. If I wanted to add more, uh, there are no servers available, but I could just click here and add that. And I'll click save. So now I have two servers where I can uh, manage my DHCP uh, split scope. If I were to manage DHCP exclusions now, both those servers show up. And this is the part I really love. Um, just, you know, the developers and the product folks really thinking about how the user is, is using this software and thinking ahead about how to make it more easy to do. Um, so obviously IPv6 is, is difficult. It is not a human readable um, protocol. So what we've done is, you know, of course you can go in and put a manual entry if you know what from and two addresses you wanna use, but we've created this uh, way to do it by percentage. So if you wanna do a 20-80 or a 50-50 split, you can go ahead and do that. Um, it's already filled it out for me. I can just click add. And now when I add the exclusion uh, range on my second server, it will automatically do everything for me, which is just really nice. I don't have to copy, paste, and add one. Um, I don't have to go back and check, you know, what my, my range was before and get out of the window and get back into the window. So again, we've just made that really easy uh, for customers to use. You can see right here, you know, how that is split up. Um, and again, it's just really easy to, uh, to see. I'm just reading this note here. Is it able to create the yeah. in the DHCP HA environment? Is it possible to create a DHCP scope on a failover mode? Uh, it yes, it is. Let me double check on that though, so that I can get you a deeper uh, answer, David. But yes, I I'm 99% certain that is the case. But I'll I'll do a, a deep dive for you on that. Okay. Um, so Maestro is known for its quick filtering. Um, you can use simple expressions, like if I wanna find everything in VLAN six that isn't in DHCP scopes, um, then I can go ahead and type in simply VLAN colon six. I can do that with all of my custom headers, um, all of my custom properties. I can also use regex expressions there. So you can imagine it could get quite complex, The the uh, filtering capabilities and search capabilities uh, when we start using regex. Um, so to make that a little simpler, then we've created these uh, folders and smart folders. So first of all, folders um, are just static structural organization um, objects. So I can go ahead and just find an IP range, find a DHCP scope, and go ahead and just add it to a folder. Um, that folder could be a representative of a project that I'm working on, or um, maybe it's, you know, certain names of, of owners or however you want to um, 
separate that out so that it's easier for you to organize it. Um, we also have smart folders and that's what I kind of wanted to go through with this filtering capability. So smart folders are essentially um, saved filters, uh, things that I go to a lot. If I want VLAN 6, you know, uh, to be a folder that I go to, then I just go here, create a new smart folder, and you'll see that VLAN 6 is already created um, or already populated within my filter because it's smart enough to grab what's in my filter currently. But there's a lot of different use cases here, right? So again, if I am a large enterprise or uh, an MSP and I can do it by customer name or customer ID, make it really easy to go in there, do some automation around that, um, you know, create reports through the APIs based on smart folders. And of course those smart folders are dynamic then. So you can see um, utilization, we have one right, right here with utilization over 80%. We don't have anything um, that has over 80% currently, but if something were to pop in there, we can go check that easily and know that, hey, my, I have a scope that's about to be overutilized and I need to do something about that. Any questions about IPAM? I know that's a really quick overview, but I, I do want to do just the half hour demo and be respectful of everyone's time. Um, we'll jump into DNS if there are no questions. Okay, so DNS is very similar to, to IPAM, how it looks. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, obviously. Um, so on the left menu, we have you know different ways to filter, common ways to filter. We have the smart folders. Um, and then of course, the, this grid that shows all the DNS zones. Uh, again, we have all of the Active Directory, Microsoft integration. Um, if I were to just pop into, let's say, mmdemo.net, um, I see all of the records contained within that zone. Now, what we've done here is this information is all real time. So we went and checked with that DNS server um, to make sure that this information is all correct. Um, and, and I actually just wrote a blog about this this week. What I really like about this is because we're an overlay and because we're known for being very responsive, um, the software is just very fast, quick to use. Um, if this is spinning, if it is taking a while to populate, there's probably something going on there. There's probably something wrong with maybe a DNS server. So maybe go check a different zone and see if that um, does the same thing, if it spins the same way. Obviously, there could be a CPU issue. Um, there could be something wrong with a network device. And we do offer you know, thoughtful um, and informative error um, messages and warnings to help you kind of pinpoint where those root issues are on the network. And we're always taking um, uh, feedback as well if you're looking for a, a better error message and things like that. So I just wanted to point that out to everyone really quick. We'll kind of end on the, um, the workflow piece, uh, another favorite of mine. So let's say that I am um, not an administrator. If I'm using a lot of self-service, if I'm using a lot of automation, um, how do I make it easy to onboard services? And DNS workflow is one of the ways that we help users with that. So I wanna create a, uh, a record um, test. I want it to be a text record. I want it to be 3600 TTL. This is legit. Um, and of course we've added the owner custom property and, and required that at Men and Mice. Um, now, you know, the magic is not in the creation of uh, a text record. I'm sure you've all done that many times. The magic is really in this option to add to request. So if I were not an admin, um, I would only have the option to add to request, um, meaning um, I wouldn't be able to create it now. So when I click that add to request, it goes to my shopping cart. I could add several more things to my shopping cart right now. Um, be warned that if, if one of these gets denied, they'll all get denied. So we recommend doing it on a, a per project basis. Um, but anyway, once uh, you've got your shopping cart filled, you go to next, you can schedule the request for a certain day or a certain change management window, um, do all of those things and then click submit. Um, 
once I'm not going, so uh, because I am an admin, it gives me the option to just go ahead and approve it. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on workflow. And this is where the approvers will then come to make sure uh, there's nothing in the, the queue here. If there are things in the queue, and we do have a few things, then they'll go ahead and read through them. You know, why, why do we need this? Who is it for? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we can go ahead and reject or approve. Uh, again, these can all be scheduled. Um, obviously, you're going to do a lot of uh, these kinds of changes during a change management window. So it makes it really easy to, again, offer that self-service um, and make it, um, you know, make it work with what your change management schedule is. Uh, we do have a few questions. Will you offer the ability to automate provision more than 256 networks via the web UI in the future? Ooh, Brent, that is a great question that I will have to get back to you on uh, for, for the specific numbers. Um, but we'll take that down. Thank you. Um, on DHCP, we can create a range and then move automatically to a folder. Yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, the other things you can do is uh, you can convert containers and ranges to, um, to scopes and vice versa. Everything can be converted. Um, just, you know, it's not totally related to your folder question, but just so you are aware. Um, on DHCP, we can view the log information or events. Yes, that is also true. Um, so anything, any object in the grid, you can generally get um, the history for, the log information for. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, we do just have a few minutes left. I'm not going to dive into the APIs today, although we will have an automation webinar, more automation uh, information coming to all of you. Um, our support team is literally magical with automation and helping our customers um, build out their own self-service, build out all sorts of things. But I do just want to show that we, we do offer full REST APIs, anything you can do in the UI's management or the management console or the web UI, you can do via the API. And we also have this nifty uh, Swagger backend built in. So if you want to do some testing before you start, you know, diving deep into, you know, your Ansible and, and Terraform workflows and, and all of that, but which by the way, we do have plugins for as well. Um, you know, you can go ahead and test it out here, get the, the response uh, from your calls and uh, see, you know, make sure everything's working before you go ahead and include those into kind of your larger workflows. With that, we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to see? Anything, any questions? And let me make sure everyone's unmuted again. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we will absolutely do some more on automation, David. We have, uh, it's in the works, let me just say that. So just uh, just give me a few weeks and, and we'll get some more out there. We do have a GitHub site, um, by the way, for those of you, especially if you're trying to learn about GitHub, um, our documentation is open to everyone. So you can come on in and um, you know look through our, our docs, um, make pull requests, if you see, you know, something that needs improvement or an error or, you know, a typo, <laughs> whatever you see, um, we are definitely open to you all having, uh, you know, some feedback there. Um, and I, I manage the documentation. So, so I'm here to tell you that I will, will take anything and everything you have for me. Um, but, you know, we, we are very active on GitHub and we do have uh, a GitHub site where you can come and see some of the things I probably shouldn't show all of that. Some of that's private, but um, you can come and see some of the things that we have going and, and we'll be adding more to that as well. Any other questions, thoughts? All right, well, we are at the half hour mark. Oh, and like I said, I would pop this back up. Um, if you do think of anything, please reach out. Um, I will get the answers to your chat questions as well uh, to make sure that you have all the information you need. And with that, uh, I appreciate everyone joining and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday.